What's going on guys? Philip Blair, Torch of Christ Ministries. Uh, Pardon the hoodie on my head, but it's cold and I want to stay warm. So it's early, about eight in the morning uh, on a Thursday. I want to make this video though, because uh, a couple days ago, a few days ago, I made a video and um, there were some that misunderstood the message and the intent and uh, so I want to clear up some of those misunderstandings, hopefully give you an opportunity to um, to be clarified too, right? That's pretty much it. It's eight in the morning though, so be, you know, definitely be patient with me. Uh, I'm not sure how good my words are going to come out. So a couple days ago, a brother reached out to me. Uh, who He was concerned. He said, I don't know this guy. Seems like he's a good brother though. And uh, he was concerned because he had watched 25 minutes of a two hour long video that I made basically talking about filling your house with a light. And the whole point of the video was that uh, the more that we seek God and the more that he fills us with our uh, fills our temple with his presence and the more that we get closer to God, the greater desire and power we will have to overcome sin, to get deliverance in our own life, uh, to conquer the strongholds that we were facing and to... Um, to really just turn away from sin in a greater way. Uh, one of the things that I noted, though, was that a lot of times we as Christians, we focus too much on sin instead of seeking God. Somehow that was taken to mean that we shouldn't focus on overcoming sin. I thought that was a given. I thought we have to focus on overcoming sin because the Bible says, be holy as he is holy. Uh, fear God, depart from evil. The list goes on. There is a ridiculous amount of scripture in the Bible on turning away from sin and running towards God. The act of running towards God is in fact at the same time running away from sin because you have God in one direction, you have sin and rebellion in the other direction. That's why repentance means to turn away from the sin, to decide that we're going to turn away from the sin that we're living in and walk towards God. It's we change our heart, we change our mind, and we decide to walk towards God. Now, what we need to understand though is that the power of the Holy Spirit he is the one who gives us the ability to walk towards him and to overcome sin. All we can do, the only thing that we have control over is our decision and our free will. Okay, we decide to repent. We decide to believe. But God draws us and then he gives us the power to do it. So the, the very act of obeying God comes from God himself. So if we're not seeking God, we have no power to overcome sin, we can try, we struggle in our flesh. That's what I see in the church all too often is we are struggling in our flesh to overcome sin and we're failing because we're not seeking God, we're not spending time with him, we're trying to live a Christian life and, and be holy, but we have no presence of God, we have no oil in our lamp, we have no light in the midst of our house, our house is full of darkness and we're unable to do it. And so we continually fail. We strive in our flesh. We fail. And then we, we get discouraged. We backslide. We turn away from God. And we wonder why God is not there. Why, you know, where are you, God? Why have you turned your back on me? Why have you forsaken me? I must have, you know, blasphemed the Holy Spirit. So many people are saying these things because they lack understanding. Doesn't mean that we're not seeking to overcome sin daily. We war against the flesh daily. The flesh is at enmity with, with God. The carnal mind is at enmity with God. So this brother reached out to me and he was concerned, but once him and I had a conversation, we both realized very quickly that we believe the exact same thing, okay? And that this guy, uh, apparently there was another guy who messaged him who was concerned and said, can you make a public exposed video, I think, or something along those lines, maybe I'm misunderstanding, uh, acknowledging and, and disputing all of the lies that Philip Blair said on his video. That's just silly because once him, this brother and I talked, we realized we believe the exact same thing. Now, maybe I didn't articulate the best in certain areas of that two hour long video. But if you look at the two hour long video, you'll see in totality, it's very clear what I mean and what I, what I, my intentions are. Not that we shouldn't try to overcome sin. Not that we're saying live in a greasy grace mentality where you just rest in Jesus and that's it, nothing else. And that we're not warring against the flesh, not trying to crucify our flesh daily, not trying to deny self, take up a cross and follow him. Those are all very biblical things. So we can't just be like, you know, oh, Jesus did all the work, so I don't have to. That's not the mindset that we should have. We should have the mindset to obey him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So all of that's still relevant. My point was uh, that 
if there is darkness in your house, you can't find the darkness that's hiding there, right? Because it's full of darkness. But if you fill your house with light, if the presence of God is strong in you, you can then go and you can examine your own life. You can find the darkness that's hiding inside of your own soul because the light will expose the darkness. If you have monsters hiding in your basement, we're a temple, we're a house, right? The Holy Spirit dwells in us. And if there are monsters, which means like oppression, you know, need for deliverance, all of that. If there are monsters hiding in our basement, monsters hiding in our house, we're not going to be able to find those those things in our life. We're not going to be able to identify the oppression in our own life if we're living in sin, if we're living in darkness. So the best way to overcome, to identify and overcome the oppression and a lot of the attacks that we're getting as Christians uh, is to fill your fill your life and your, your soul with the presence of God, with the, the oil, get your lamp as full of oil as you can. And w- once you do that, then you're able to find those evil things things that are lurking in your life. You're able to see what's going on in your life. You're able to see the negative behaviors, the, the, the filthy mindset or the, um, you know, the things that you shouldn't be doing, the sin that you're living in. Right. And sometimes it's just sin. Sometimes it's just flesh. Sometimes we have oppression going on. And, and if we're not living, walking in the light as he is in the light and having fellowship with one another so that the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all unrighteousness, then we're unable to identify what's flesh, what's a spiritual thing that's oppressing us, uh, what's maybe just character flaws, uh, which I think a lot of character flaws are based on uh, us. Basically, we, we form our identity around the lies of the enemy throughout uh, much of our life. So um, it, it goes hand in hand with all of that, the proclivity of, of sin in the flesh. Uh, is towards a lot of the lies that the enemy has filled our head with over, you know, a lifetime of sin. So all of this goes together. I'm not going to do a whole two-hour video again. Go back, watch this two-hour video. Okay, I just made it a few days ago. It's a very good video. And just instead of trying to nitpick and find things that you disagree with, humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up seek to learn and i promise you you'll be edified by this video it's a very good video and it has a very good point to it but you have to be patient and listen don't take one phrase that i say in the context of everything else and pull it out and then stand on that one phrase because you can do that in anything that you do in anything that that you listen to or you watch on youtube anything you could you could just take one statement out and you can completely misunderstand it okay nobody is saying don't uh, fight the, the, the urges and the, the sins of your flesh. No one's saying uh, to just rest in you know, Jesus and not pick up your cross and deny him daily. That is our responsibility as Christians, to, if we love him, to obey him, to walk in his ways. Okay, That will always be the case. I thought that was a given. But if you haven't followed this ministry for very long, go back and watch all the videos, the other encouragement videos I've made, and it will give you greater understanding. That two-hour video, though, it's a great watch. Please take your time and go and watch the whole thing. If you watch 25 minutes of it, you might not come away with a full understanding. Watch the whole thing. It's not that long. Two hours. We sit through a movie all the time. Watch it. It will edify you. It will uh, encourage you. It's a really good teaching. I really think it was a good teaching. Um... I like to be honest with myself. I've made some videos. I came away afterwards. I'm like, man, that wasn't the greatest video I've ever made in my life. Um, Starting to get hot in here. But um, it is. It's a good teaching. and, And I wanted to encourage you and edify you. So please go and watch that. All right. God bless you guys. I'm sorry that I had to repeat some of this. But I wanted to clarify for those who are confused. Um, That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Love you guys.